Hello and welcome back. In this video we're going to discuss absolute value equations and see how they're very similar to irregular equations and how they're slightly different. First thing you want to know is absolute value generally represents the distance of any real number from zero and the absolute value symbols are these solid vertical lines and only the expression that's found inside these symbols are considered as part of the absolute value calculation because we deal with that calcu calculation slightly different than we would with a normal equation. Anything outside these symbols, we will just simply deal with that in the normal multi-step operation process or multi-step equation process. Uh, therefore, all absolute value symbols, and this is very key, must be isolated before applying the absolute value solving techniques. Something that's really important. Since absolute value equation is basically a distance calculation, any absolute value that is equal to a negative cannot be possible because the output of an absolute value can never go below zero. You can never have a solution if you have an absolute value that's equal to, to a negative. Now, most of the time, our absolute values will have two solutions. If your absolute value, we're going to abbreviate that ABS, if that is equal to zero, then the chances are you're only going to have one solution. And if the absolute value is equal to a negative, then there will be no solution. Okay, let's take a look at some of the basics of absolute value. Absolute value, again, is a distance from zero. So in this first one, we have the absolute value 5. And the, the reason that it's actually 5 is because we want to know how far that number is from zero. So if we look at the number 5 on the number line down here, and zero is here, and we count it out, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units away from zero. That's why we have a positive 5. And the same thing for negative 5. If we plot that, we have a negative 5 here. But how far from zero is that? Well, that's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units. So it's a distance calculation. That's why it always comes out positive. If this was equal to a negative right here, then that would be impossible because we don't talk about negative distances on the number line. Another example is what if we replace that with a variable instead of a number itself and we ask the absolute value of x is equal to 7. So what we need to know is what can I put inside of the absolute value so that it will output a positive 7. So we're really asking what number is 7 units away from 0. So what number is 7 units away from 0? So if we start at 0 and go 7 units up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, there's one answer. So x could equal 7. But I can also go in the down direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and see that x could also equal negative 7. And here's where absolute values kind of deviate or are different from regular solving of equations. Since I have an absolute value of x that's equal to 7, and we know that we're going to have two outputs, we can then drop the absolute value bars and write two separate equations. We can say that x is going to equal the positive version of that answer, which is 7, or x is going to equal the negative version of that answer, which is 7. Another way we could write this is x minus 0, the absolute value of that, would equal 4. You can think of this right here as your starting point. That's your starting point. And this right here is distance from the starting point. So we want to know what number is 4 units away from 0. What number is 4 units away from 0? Well, again, we start at 0. We go 4 units up, 1, 2, 3, 4. We can see that's a positive 4. But there's also one on the other side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 units down. So the way we could rewrite this problem is call it x minus 0 equals 4 or x minus 0 equals negative 4. And then we just solve both these equations. But here's another one. This is our starting point. So we're talking about 2 and we want to know what number is 4 units away from that. In order to solve this, I'm going to show you what it looks like algebraically and then show you on the graph how we can find it. So we're going to take what's inside, which is x minus 2, and we're going to let it equal 4. And we're going to write it again, x minus 2. Notice that this side and this side are exactly the same. But instead of putting 4, I'm going to put negative 4 because I know that the number that goes inside here, this value, whatever it is, 
has to be outputted to four, so it can either a four inside there or it could equal a negative four. So all I gotta do now is solve both sides. So I'm gonna add two to both sides here, and I get x is equal to six. And on this side, I'm gonna add two to both sides again, but the difference is instead of a neg uh, positive four, I have a negative four, so I end up with a negative two. So the answer to this problem is x could equal six or negative two. And here's how we'd calculate it. We did say the starting point was two, and notice that it's the opposite of the negative sign there. So if I start at two, and I go four units up, one, two, three, four units up, I do land right on a six, so there's my first graph of that. But if I go four units down, one, two, three, four units down, I end up at negative two, and my answers were six and negative two, the difference being my starting point wasn't zero anymore, it was two. And if you look at the absolute value up here, inside, this is a positive two down here, but this is a negative up there. So the starting point is always gonna be the opposite of what you see there. That's a negative two, but the starting point's actually gonna be at positive two. Here's another one, x plus three is equal to six. First thing we do is write it as two separate equations, once with the positive, so x plus three equals positive six. And we're gonna write it again, x plus three, inside the, the absolute value bars equal to negative six, and we're gonna solve both equations. That's how we find out the solutions. So we're gonna minus three here, minus three here, and that will give us an x equal to three. That's one solution. And we're gonna minus three here and minus three here, and x will equal negative nine. I'm gonna go ahead and plot negative nine, which is here, and positive three, which is here. And those are the two solutions. But if we go halfway between them, if we go halfway between those points, we will see the halfway point is right here at negative three. And each number is one, two, three, four, five, six units on this side. So we're six units away from negative three. And one, two, three, four, five, six units away from negative three on the high side. So if you look back at the equation, another way of interpreting this is what number is six units away from negative three. And we can see at negative three, we go up six and down six, and we end up with three and negative nine. And both of those are the answers. And if we wanna be sure, we can go back and put them in. The first one would be negative nine plus three. And the absolute value, well, negative nine plus three comes out to a negative six. And the absolute value of negative six does equal six. And we could do it again with the positive three. So three plus three gives you six the absolute value of six is still equal to six. So we can see that both answers actually work. In this example, we notice we have a times three on the outside. Well, in order to solve these, you must first isolate the absolute value. You're gonna pretend that the absolute value is like one big variable. So we're gonna get rid of the three first. To get rid of the three, we're gonna divide by three on this side. We're gonna divide by three on this side. The threes will cancel out, leaving the absolute value of x minus four equal to five. Once my absolute value is isolated by itself, I can then write my two equations. x minus four is equal to positive five, and x minus four is equal to negative five. Go ahead and solve both of those. So we're gonna add four, add four, x is equal to nine. Add four, add four, x is equal to negative one. Okay, so we have nine, which is here, and negative one, which is here. And the midpoint between them is going to be positive four. Positive four, as expected, the opposite of this number here. But how far away are they? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So they're five units away from that midpoint. It started out at 15, but notice the midpoint wasn't 15, it was 15 divided by three. The midpoint, this number right here, how far away they are from the midpoint is only valid once the absolute value has been isolated by itself. Then you can read it as what number is five units away from positive four? So positive four, go up five this way, go down five, and that's how you get your numbers of nine and negative one. And they both work. 
And if you substitute them both back into X up here, you'll see that that's true. On this next question, we have a, a problem similar to the previous one, only now we have a minus six. So again, we're treating this like it's a big variable, so we're gonna get rid of the negative six and the three first, but which one do we normally get rid of? One's a times and one is a, a minus. So we're still doing reverse PEMDAS, so we're gonna get rid of the minus six first, so we're gonna add six to both sides bring down what I haven't changed, three times x, the absolute value of x minus four, and that's gonna equal 24. Then I'm gonna divide both sides by three, divide both sides by three, threes cancel on this side, I have an absolute value of x minus four is now equal to eight. And at this point, I can, so I can write two equations, x minus four is equal to eight, and x minus four is equal to negative eight and just solve both of those. So add four to both sides, plus four, plus four. X is equal to 12, which actually goes off, one, two, goes off my graph a little bit. Add four here, add four here, and X is gonna equal negative four, which is way over here. And if I wanna be absolutely certain that's correct, I can come up here and put a 12 in and do the calculations. 12 minus four is eight. So we get an eight, the absolute value of eight is eight. Eight times three is 24. 24 minus six gives me 18. So it does work with the 12. We'll do it again with the negative four. So I'll put a negative four in place of X. Negative four minus four gives you a negative eight, but the absolute value of negative eight is just a positive eight times three is 24 again, minus the six brings you back to 18. So both answers do work. The only change in this one is I now added a number out in front of the X, so I have a coefficient, but still inside of the absolute value. So you still have to isolate the absolute value first. So we're gonna add six to both sides, get rid of the, solve using reverse, uh, con <clears throat> So what we're gonna do first is add six to both sides. We're still solving using reverse PEMDAS. Three times the absolute value of two X minus four is gonna equal 24. Next, we're gonna divide both sides by three, divide by three, only if three outside cancels. I still have the absolute value of two X minus four is equal to eight. And since my absolute value has been isolated, notice that it's all by itself. Once you have your absolute value by, your, by itself, that's when you write your two equations. So 2x minus 4 is equal to positive 8, and 2x minus 4 is equal to negative 8. And then you solve them both. So I'm going to add 4, add 4 on this side. I have 2x equal to 12, divide by 2, x is equal to 6. Same thing over here, add 4, add 4. So I have two X is equal to negative four divided by two X is equal to negative two. So my two answers in this case would be positive six and negative two. And if you wanna substitute them back in here and check it out, you'll see that they both work. So if I were to graph them, positive six would be here, negative two would be there. And there's my two solutions. Okay, on a problem like this, I'm gonna first divide by three. I gotta isolate my absolute value. So the three goes away. I have an absolute value of two X minus four, and that's gonna equal a negative six. And it's at this point, we realize that an absolute value has an output of negative. Now remember, absolute values can never output a negative value themselves. Since that absolute value is equal to a negative, we would say that there is no solution for this problem. Now you can try to solve it by writing two separate equations, but when you go to substitute those answers, whatever you get, when you go to substitute those back in place of X, you'll see that neither one of those numbers will make the left-hand side and right-hand side of this equation be equal. So there's no solution.